I'm sorry, the show is presented by Onnit. Bidets are back. The Church of What's Happening Now is proud to introduce you to HelloTushy.com. That's HelloTushy.com. HelloTushy.com makes portable devices that spray your butt clean with water. Go to HelloTushy.com slash church right now. Go there right now and get 10% off of your order. That's it's a stuffing stu- It's a stocking stuffer, and nobody wants to have a dirty asshole on Christmas Eve. And I think we could ship it to you there. Just let them know. We'll figure something out. HelloTushy.com. It's the best. The show is also brought to you by Headspace. Headspace is meditation made simple. Download the free Headspace app and begin their Take 10 program for 10 d- days of guided meditation at headspace.com slash joey. That's headspace.com slash joey. Oh, shit. Here we go. Five days of shoplifting left. Let's do this shit. Crank that mule lead. Kick that lead. What's the story in this motherfucker? Mickey Gall is in the house tonight. What's Fresh up? off Sacramento. Fucking with a future. I was telling somebody today, if somebody said to me I could turn back my life, I would go, I'll start from 30. Like, I wouldn't want to do my 20s over. If I had your 20s, I'd do it all over. No, I'm again. loving it. You're loving it. It's good it. 20s. Congratulations. Thank brother. you. Thank you. You deserve it in the way you did it. Very nice. Thank you. Very smooth. Thank you. It was. I honestly, I I, I never saw the show, so I watched it. I watched it today because I, I had seen you. My first uh, fight watching you was CM Punk, and then I watched it today. And I, Joey talks a lot about about this time in your life, like the early the mid twenties, and I was just thinking like it was like a year ago, right? And now you're three fights in the UFC. Like you were going, you were like the biggest fighter. I saw everyone had the shirt. Like yeah. you're the only guy in the in the show who had an act like sponsors and a shirt. Those sponsors must be. So happy, like they they must have made <laughs> eight thousand times their return off of that video because, like, you were just it's it was in Philly, right? Like a local yeah, Philly yeah. show, and you're from Jersey, mm-hmm. and you went in there and destroyed it. it was awesome. <clears throat> it was like a, it was cool to see. And then a year later, three fights, three UFC them. fights, yeah, three it's and fucking up. surreal, huh? Crazy, crazy. What Quick. Your, what does your family think? They're having fun. They like it. Um, yeah, my yeah, my actually, I'm surprised you don't know my dad. You guys grew up right right around the same time. He's fifty three also. You were what talking is, about you were talking about uh pulling scams at the English town uh auction. Yeah, that's where he used to go. He used to yeah, he he grew up in Manalapan. Now how far is that from English town? Close. He used to work there. Like he had a, that was like his first job. The funny races and all that. The right, cars yeah, those that shit. selling you know, selling shit. The, the mall there. It was an outdoor thing. And everything was stolen, Mickey. Yeah. It was nineteen fucking seventy five. There was no cops. There was no legislation. Yeah. There was no Kmart. There was no Walmart. There was no... Where do you go to get returns? You know, like when you... What's that store you go to? Uh, Marshall's? TJ Maxx. With TJ Maxx. The, the, it's, you know, there's a yeah. stitching that's wrong. That's why you're getting $2,000 pants for $42. Yeah. Because the stitching is wrong. Let me ask you a question. We're from Jersey. Give me those fucking things, you know? <laughs> so in those days, all that shit in English town. Now, I lucked out on that. Like that, that was a, f- a friend of mine who said, let's take a ride to English Town. And we walked around buying eight tracks. Eight tracks were cheap. They were stolen. They weren't stolen. They were duplicated. They did what Columbia House did uh-huh. mm-hmm. and sold them to you for a dollar. Give me give me 12 for $10. Are you fucking kidding me in those days? I remember going there with my grandma. They had Is like it still shoes. there? Yeah. It's yeah. still there. Yeah. I, I, yeah, when I was little, I'd go there all the time. Now, is it still on Saturdays and Sundays? Or? I think so, yeah. I haven't, I haven't been in years. But uh, yeah, I remember. You would they, hear they, the they had, like crappy looking Nikes, but they they, they weren't Nikes. 
Yeah, all, all bootleg stuff. All bootleg stuff. But that was then. But uh, that was now. Then there was a place that had Converse close by. That's how the whole thing went down. There was a dumpster of sneakers. And you would go in there. The only problem was you had to find the match to that other motherfucker. That's where the time consumption was. So you just took a bunch out and kept throwing them out, throwing them out. And you put them in the car. And then you sorted them out when you got home. Sometimes you bit did better than others. Sometimes you said, let's go back in that dumpster and get the matches. Because you had to get the match. It was, And in these days, there were the Julius Irving sneakers. And they called them limousines for the feet. And they were maybe $22. But you could get them at English Town for 7 So these guys would actually go to dumpsters, jump, and then bring the shit to English Town and sell them for 7 fucking dollars. I would take them and sell them for 15 in North Bergen. What, are you kidding me? Oh, like a doctor. They didn't know there was stitching. They didn't, nobody knew that they made mistakes. Converse was fucking Converse, you know. But I, everything. They had rims in those days down there. They had, like, fucking radios for your cars, like real expensive radios. And they weren't stolen out of cars. It was stuff that was hijacked off trucks. That's all it was. And everybody knew it was hot stuff and shit. Who gave a fuck? It's English Town, New Jersey, bitches. What, what, was it like a store, like a, a outside, flea market? Is outside flea market. Flea market. Yeah. Flea market. Yeah. Flea market. Yeah. Equivalent to the Slauson. What do they do here? What do they do here that you went to? The swap to? meet. The swap meet. That's uh, the same okay. fucking thing. What's a swap meet down there? People go down there and sell what they got. I think so. I, I only Jeans went there for and like sneakers the... sneakers and stuff like that. Yeah, the, 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 I think they sell like random store space, I guess. I guess you can do whatever you want. That's crazy. Have you seen, like, in other countries they have that, but they'll have, like, like when I went to Israel, they'll have, like, barber shops in those places. They have, like, everything you need in the local market. It's pretty cr crazy. They probably have to go to Israel and show those motherfuckers what it's all about. How old were you when you first started? Um, well, you started Taekwondo like everybody else. Stuff nah. Like that. I, um, I grew up, like, playing all the sports, football, baseball, basketball. Um when I was 13, I started boxing. I'd have, like, my dad would drive me at, like, 6 in the morning on a Saturday and, like, drop me off there. Um, and I'd, I'd go. It was in uh, Fanwood. So, like, like you know, like the playing fields. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, it was uh, the dude who used to train Lennox Lewis, Harold Shadow Knight. Him and his brothers had a gym. So, like, it, it was a good spot. Uh, but, I, you know, it was, I wasn't so consistent then. Then I started doing jiu-jitsu when I was 16. And that... I took to that, like to do MMA. So eight years been doing jujitsu, like, like seven, eight years training for MMA. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And most people just go on those circuits, local circuits, for a while, and they go like seven, eight fights. Yeah. Then that's the path I expected to take. Right. Then the yeah. UFC. Then the your manager sends your tape to the UFC. Yeah. Or you guess yeah something like and that. You had him coming to your town or him coming to that fight and. Yeah, he came to my debut. I figured I would have had to beat like you know seven or eight, beat up seven or eight more guys regionally, and then I get my I get in the UFC. It's a fucking dream come true. Yeah, you know, that's a dream of a comedian to go on stage and to be a director in the thing, and all of a sudden you're perfect for his movie and you get in the movie. That was the dream, you know, whatever. Yeah. But it was the dream for you, which is fucking dynamite. So you went from A to Z. Like yeah. the fucking one day. Yeah, I went from and then you called out the, CM Punk, so yeah. you had a plan. Yeah, you right were, as I found out, right, I found out like a month before the owner called me, and I was like, "Hey, I have big news. Uh, Dana White's gonna be at the fight." And I was like, "All right, so how do I make the most of this?" It's like, boom! I called that dude CM Punk. I'll beat my guy. I'll be one to know. CM Punk's oh no, that's a like record. Like that fight can happen. So I was like, you know, who? I, I figured everyone would be doing it. Like it seemed so obvious. Who am I gonna call out? Robbie Lawler? They'd be like, "Shut up, idiot," you know. So I, that was I, a smart move, man. Genius yeah. fucking move. Yeah, so I just got on the mic because I love to fight him. I didn't think anything was going to happen with it. And then a month later, I was watching UFC with my dad, and they show a commercial for the Looking for a Fight show, and it was like me talking. I was we're like, what? We like re recorded the TV screen with our phones. Yeah, it was wild. It was, the one thing I noticed is when you guys were like shaking Dana's hand after the fight, there was this one guy, and I'm sure he was great, and I, I think he won, but he's like, it was an honor to fight in front of you, Dana. Like, it was a, an honor. I hope to fight in front of you again, sir. And you were like, want to know? Give me CM Punk, bitch. And he, really, he like he responded to that. Like, you would think maybe, like, oh, I should be respectful to the owner of the UFC. And you're like, want to know? Give me CM Punk. 
<laughs> no, I wasn't. I think I said it was well, an you honor. Say, you didn't say bitch. <laughs> you didn't say bitch, but you said like one. I, at least, yeah, I was like, hey, want to know, man? That, could, that, that fucking happened. No, I wasn't gonna be disrespectful, Dana. No, you okay. weren't disrespectful, yeah. but you were confident. You weren't. You weren't like okay. kissing the ring or whatever, or however you want to say it. And it was just, it was interesting to see that he. And yeah. he even the last, the the ending clip of the show is, I'm interested. Yeah, like that's like the, he. You obviously caught his attention. You know, sometimes it's not what you say; it's how you say it, man. Yeah. And if a dude's cool, he feels your passion. He feels you. You're in like Flint. You know, yeah. it's it's so easy. It's like when. Uh, Who's the heavyweight champion? Stoic? Uh, Steve Miocic. Steve, Steve Miocic. The one time when he fought, he just went after Dana. You know, yeah. and he did it in a certain way that you could see it was his heart. Like, he's like, enough is enough. Yeah. I fucked give up. Give me everybody. that belt. Yeah, give me that fucking belt. I fucked up everybody already. You know, if you don't ask for it, they're not going to give it to you, guys. Closed mouths don't get fed. You know, if you walk up there and go, hi, yeah, I'll find whoever the corporation puts in front of me. That's great. You didn't do dick. Every time you fight, if you have a successful, a tremendous fucking win, like the last two you had, you got to go out there and sling dick. You know, half of this game is mental. You know, I like when people go a month after, Mickey's going to fight in September. Who do you like? I don't fucking know. I'll tell you after the weigh-in. I'll tell you after the weigh-in. For me, when I used to go to weigh-ins with Joe, I'd see shit that was crazy. And in my mind, I'd make a mental note. And the next thing you know, I'm like, I didn't bet it. I didn't bet it, because you start learning that that fight is won right there at that weigh-in with the mind. You could, it's how he reacts to it sometimes. So come out and call somebody the fuck out. They'll be home watching the same fight you're watching, giggling. Yeah. And next thing you know, Dana's got you both on the phone. If you keep winning, they gotta keep giving the guys the ass for. Yeah. It's plain and that. That's it's that plain and fucking simple. A man without a plan is not a man. You know. Listen, man, I didn't know this. The expectancy of a fucking running back is three years. Three years, yeah. I never fucking knew that, okay? I never knew that fact. That's a fact. Because we look at people that go for six or seven years. We don't see the medium-range guys that play three games and blow out their knees. Now they're out for a year, then they come back. And like that dude for the know. Giants. What's his name? He break his neck. It was like David Wilson. Yeah, he had to retire. Is that, is that his he, name? He was like rookie of the year or like the one, the number one rusher. He was our first rusher. round draft pick. Yeah. Like, and then, yeah, he's like a year or two. It was supposed to be like the next, like our next running back. Out. Oh. Bad neck. Career over. And you don't even, those are the ones that you see. But like, like Joey was saying, a lot of time is like sometimes, because I used to be a big fan. I used to have a lot of time when I was young. And you see these people get drafted, especially quarterbacks. You see them get drafted, and a year or two later, they're selling real estate, or they, they're just just because they don't get any chance. Like it's crazy. Our our good buddy uh, Nate Boyer, who came on when he was like, I think wasn't he like he's late thirties? He's still 30s? around. He's still lurking. Oh yeah, he's still around. But yeah, it was just it's uh it's there's so little, so few jobs, and it's it's too competitive. It's so weird now, even. And uh, you're a young man, you're 24, but you remember George St. Pierre? Hell yeah. Like, a lot of people don't. Like, when I heard this a couple of weeks ago that a lot of people don't remember who, that's how much new fans have gotten oh, okay. on the, the UFC. Okay, the Conor McGregor crew. The whole crew, in. maybe yeah. even a little before Conor McGregor. They don't even know who, who GSP is. Right now, MMA, UFC is moving really fast. Yeah. You're on a fast fucking uh, moving track up. right now. And you're intelligent as fuck because you have a plan, you know. Always, yeah. Lee, what do we always talk about? Being fucking, what's that word you say? That uh, every, calculated. Calculated. That's that's big. And it's tough to be calculated at a young age. Yeah. To have the control. You have all the weapons, you know. Why? So, Did, was doing jujitsu at 16 help that? Because you really, uh, it seems like that would be it. Pro yeah, probably. Yeah, that, that problem solving and stuff like that. Thinking ahead. I've, I've, I've always been smart, not to, you know, to my own horn, but, yeah, my my uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, real strategic guy, David Adiv, he was, like, Israeli special forces, jiu-jitsu black belt, like, seventh degree, so, yeah, he, uh, he's a serious dude. He instilled that in me a little bit, too, along with my, with my dad. It's just really weird that uh, when you start fighting, playing football, you wrestle, especially from the area we're from. Mm. We have so many fucking knuckleheads, you know, and and a lot of people uh, 
punch hard. You know, they gifted with the uh, gift of punching hard. They got a purple belt in jujitsu. They got a tattoo. They <laughs> fight three times. They go three and zero. Oh. They do a couple of shots at Decca de Roblin to really make them crazy. They do some ecstasy some weekends. <laughs> Sweat it out. Yeah. Some more steroids. <laughs> you put that whole mix together with the tattoo ink, you're fucked. You understand me? You're fucked. And they go into a, a situation or they go 3-0 and with knockouts. They hit really hard. But they go into the UFC with that, I'll just start knocking people out. And you run into Damian Maya. You technique know, and now you it takes two years to get out even up to close to going in that fucking momentum with Damian Meyer you're so fucking well rounded you're so well rounded right off the fucking bat that's what really scared me especially after watching you Saturday I go wait a second and you have control so you have all the weapons right there it's just a matter of a man without a plan is not a man. Nietzsche, you follow me? Yes, so sir. You got it. That's yes, it. Sir. And the rest is about Jersey. Who gives a fuck? You know what I'm <laughs> it's all about Jersey. That's where you Jersey's learn how to take a beating. Oh, my God. I took. I got beat up so many times in Jersey. I never got beat up down the shore, though. I didn't cause problems down the shore. I was a little smarter than that. Where were you getting beat up? North Jersey? North Jersey. Yeah. North Jersey. You know, all on my own stupidity. One time I got uh, beat up in the city. One time we got chased trying to go get drugs or something. But never, like, uh, we didn't start trouble. One time I got beat up, but this guy was trying to bait. We would mug these fucking pedophiles and shit up in North Jersey. So You were mugging pedophiles? Mugging fags, that's, whatever the that's fuck. That's justice. Not. No, these guys pedophiles. were like guys that were drinking in the city, and they get drunk. And they wanted a guy to suck their dick. So they take the fucking uh, West Side Highway and come over to northern New Jersey. <laughs> and we'd hang out by a park. And we had a dude who looked kind of handsome. We'd take his shirt off. And he'd be the bait. And we'd <laughs> wait by a fucking tree. You know what I'm saying? What, what would he do before a car? Would he just be like? He would just be standing <laughs> on the corner whistling. <laughs> <laughs> and the car would pull up, and then he'd do a U-turn, and then he'd do another turn, and on that one he'd look at you like, <laughs> and you'd look back, and, and all of a sudden he'd pull up and go, excuse me, do you know how to get to 48-8, 29th Street? And the guy's like, no, you're on fucking 200th Street. You're far away. Uh, are you looking for a ride? Are you lost? And, and all of a sudden it would be perfect. You would. I saw this at 17, 16. So what, then you guys are running up on the dude in the car? No, no, then my buddy would go, so what do you want to do? You know, what do you want to do? I don't know, what do you want to do? I don't know, pull the car over, let's talk about it. And the guy would get out of the car because your fucking thing is weak. Here you are, this guy's like 25, 26, he's probably married, got a kid. But he's been wanting to get his dick sucked for years. He, his father's Italian. He can never get his dick sucked when his father's still alive. Or, <laughs> or he won't get none of that will money. He was on the way back from the funeral or something. There's a lot of guys like that. that you could tell they want to suck a dick, but they got too deep. They fell into the American dream. And now they can't tell nobody they want to suck a dick. They're too, they got kids. They got a wife. But when you see him, you're like, that dude's a dick sucker. We all have that one friend in the circle that you look at and you go, you know what? I know one that if I get real drunk, I could talk to this guy in the second of my dick one <laughs> night at four in the morning when nobody's watching and shit. Hysterical. It really is fucking crazy how... I don't even know what we're talking about. You and mugging the pedophiles. So they would... they get out of the car and my, they would come up to my friend and my friend would walk with them. And I never climbed one of the trees. I'm never a tree climber. I'd hide behind a tree and shit. <laughs> and he'd take them under the tree where my buddy would be up there like fucking Rambo trying not to fall <laughs> off the tree. And all of a sudden, my friend would go, you want me to suck your dick? Yeah. I pull you, where's the money? And the guy would take the 50 out. And if he had like more cash on him, he'd go take down your pants. The guy would take his dick out. As my friend would put one knee down, he'd oh. come right up and kick the guy in the balls. The cool. guy would drop. And then the guy in the tree would drop on him with a karate chop. <laughs> and all of a sudden, eight of us would charge him <laughs> with so bayonets cool. and leaves and fucking. <laughs> Dude's about to have, like, he's so excited and it just turns so bad. <laughs> oh, my God. 
<laughs> what a fucking nightmare. And, uh, and for the record, I probably did it six times to like fucking, like two of them were like chubby truck, truck drivers. It's like none of these guys were really gay. These guys were not gay at all. They were just confused guys. I saw that in early, and I saw how it would go down. How the U-turn, the whole thing would play out. We'd be sitting there for three, four hours. But there was a crew of guys in North Bergen that had become professionals at it. Like, this is Jer Like, we were talking about things that happened in Jersey when I was growing up. There was, my town is really big. How big is Watchung? How big was your graduate? I'm from Greenbrook. Greenbrook. Um, that's like, yeah, it's right near North Plainfield, um, okay. Bridgewater. All right, no, yeah, no. All, yeah, right there, right there. Now, how far is Not North Plainfield from motherfucking Plainfield? Right next to it. Right next border, to it. Yeah. When I was That's a kid, Plainfield was bad. Yeah, play, Plainfield's tough. North Plainfield's, <coughs> you know. Yeah, they're, they're tough. They're, it's a tough, tough spot. North Plainfield. Jesus fucking yeah. Christ. I haven't heard those words in years. Grew up playing football with all those kids. Did yeah, you? Yeah. Group group three or group four? Um, in high school, uh, we were group four. I watch on. I watch on. Oh, I was I was Calvin football shit. team my senior year. So you guys group four and you guys were white. Yeah. So oh, means, watch on Hill, super white. So yeah. That that's you, all the rest of the up. So that means you play the big black motherfuckers from group four, because group four, my district is. We had to play, you know, East Orange and yeah, yeah. Bayonne and Jersey City, you know. No, we didn't play Hudson Catholic. In basketball, we had to play St. Anthony's. Okay. Because they're group four. You were North Bergen? I was. I went to North Bergen, which is okay. Hudson County. Yeah, yeah. So we were group four, but that's right, because it's like group four, section eight. That means they got 90 fucking eight what sections. What do the groups mean? Size of the school. Size of the school. So we had a oh. 1,500 graduating class my high school. In 1982, so we were Group Four. Yeah, we we're, were like 2,000 something. Yeah. How many? Like 1,200. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah, 600 yeah. a grade. So that's that's like 2,000. Jesus, I was yeah. like 300 a grade. Yeah, so we were Group Four. We were Group Four up, which is Hoboken. Yeah. Hoboken. Union Hill Memorials Group Four. Yeah, we Camden. play Union, we play Union, we play Union, Hackensack. Union, Hackensack, the, all those, yeah. the goats. Plainfield, yeah. Plainfield and yeah. shit. Now, who plays like Neptune, New Jersey? I don't know. That's down the shore. Where yeah, is fuck... Asbury Park, Manasquam, Walltown. Okay, let me tell you something. That was the scariest thing I ever saw in 1980. It was Neptune, New Jersey, Biddy Basketball, 1980. It was fucking on, motherfuckers. It was real. They say the rumor that Neptune is where Joe Theismann's from. Isn't Joe is that Theismann? Right? He's from down there, and so is Jack Nicholson. Manusquan. From Matt, right? Manusquan, Neptune, whatever. Supposedly Neptune, but Manusquan claimed them and shit. <laughs> See, because he didn't want to let people know he was from <laughs> Neptune, New Jersey. Joe Theismann claim, claims New Brunswick. And where, where, where? Yeah, maybe. Uh, may, I may be wrong. Where do you go to high school? Watch. Okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Let's see, Mister Fucking New Brunswick. Unless you That's went. That's my New stomping ground. Yeah. Unless he went to New Brunswick High, he's fucking <laughs> shit. Watch. South River High. Try what I tell you. How far is that? How far is that? How far? South River. Yeah. See, down the fucking shore, cocksucker. Don't lie to me, bitch. No wonder Lawrence Taylor broke your leg, cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. He claims, yeah, they claim that shit later. Because is South like, River, is that is that right past, uh, like near Highland Park, like right past? I have no idea. Clear, so you, clear, you, the only thing I'll you know, say is if it could be just the hospital he was born at was in New Brunswick. Yeah, could that yeah, be that's it? what it is. That's why I said yeah. what high school. It's going to say they're from whatever, but where'd they grow up? Yeah, so Anytime they say South River, that means people are dying. Yeah, he was raised in South That's River. That's what River. South River means. Motherfuckers are dying. Okay, yeah. there's a river there. Something's getting fucked. <laughs> so That's down. where they put Adrienne and Los Cerbo in fucking yeah. South River and shit, right? Oh, my God. That's the truth. That's where they put us, South River. That whole fucking area there by whatever. The woods. Is that the where woods. they got stuck in the woods in the in the Sopranos? The Russians? That's a pine, that's a pine barrens. That's the pine barrens. That's down the shore. That's fucking crazy. Down the shore, that's where you get to see people get kicked in the teeth. Oh <laughs> Manasquan. That's why I, I told Seaside. you. I've seen some. 
Listen, it's 1982. We rent the fucking house. Seaside? Seaside, and then little bits of it. You could get little hotels in those days, which had been there since 1940. Those things were older than Dick. But on the Seaside, Seaside Park border, when I was in high school, there was a fucking guy that fit. He had sad bread hot dogs. <laughs> With the chili and the buns. No, he had the, the onions and the sauerkraut and the whole thing. But he was Italian. He made his own chili with a little kick to it. Yeah. Oh, my fucking God. I would give a hand for that fucking chili right now. <laughs> and he would get you for 10 hot. No, he would give you 12 hot dogs for 20 bucks. When we were in high school, we'd smoke a fucking joint, and we'd each go in on that and tip the motherfucker. And he had, like, sodas and something else. Everybody down the show had yeah. some different angle, man. The Burger King. Where's fucking... See, you guys are too young. There was a club called Montego Bay. I wonder where... See, Manasquan has the biggest bar in the in Jersey. The, the whatever the... Bar what is it? Bar A. No. The biggest bar down the Jersey Shore is in Manasquan. It's called the Osprey. Osprey. The Osprey's been there since Jesus left Chicago, dog. That's how long. My high school football coaches worked security at the fucking Osprey. That's how old that fucking place is. So, wherever. Belmar. Belmar. That Belmar, Bur yeah. Belmar. That Burger King in Belmar. Hey, let me drop it on you was the only Burger King in New Jersey when I was in high school that served sweet iced tea in the summer. That motherfucker was hopping, Jack. You understand me? <laughs> hopping. <laughs> Fucking iced tea with lemon in it. We live for that shit in Jersey. I remember going down this show. I was telling some guys a story the other day about now for me to live where I live, to go down the shore, I heard on a Friday night it really is three or four hours. Is that true? I don't know. You don't live there. For what? To go to... Go to down, drive up down. north to drive down. Uh, if you go late, you, you can it. make it in two. But yeah, yeah, it could be three hours for sure. From where you're coming from, yeah, you're at the top. You're probably in New York. When I was a kid, it used to be 45 fucking minutes. Oh, uh, no dude. way. Oh, my God. I wish. We used to, when I was in high school, I was so fortunate. We had buddies <laughs> that worked at UPS in Saddlebrook. All right. And they worked from 11 to 2 when they got out at 2. But I had this other friend named Rob Merlo. His dad had a restaurant in Paramus called Mando's. So he would pay us each 25 bucks and all you could eat if we would go back to his bar at 1 in the morning and we clean the bar and then we work for Stinky and the other guy to get out of work at fucking UPS and we'd all drive down to Seaside together. Okay. We were in fucking high school, guy. 50 bucks. Fact. Unbelievable. Kids won't do this shit today. They're too busy on their fucking computers, <laughs> analyzing things, Ubering, <laughs> fucking yelping and shit. <laughs> yelping. You know what I'm saying? They'll be yelping, cocksucker. You don't need to yelp nothing. Take a chance, Columbus did. So fucking, uh, we would go back to this restaurant, I remember he'd go in the office, and his dad had lobster tails, and we'd start eating those fucking lobster tails, Mickey, like we owned the joint. And he would come back and he go, what happened to the lobster tails? We'd go through 20 lobster tails. I said, you could eat anything, not just the lobster tails. We'd eat the fucking lobster tails. We'd get fucking hammered, you know, and then get in the car and drive down the shore and we wouldn't pay tolls. Okay? That's or, why those 45 minutes you're doing 90. Yeah. No, or, no, I'm, I'm still with that. Or, or the guy in the passenger seat would hook shot a quarter. Over. If it made it, it made it. If it didn't, say <laughs> la vie, motherfucker. If it dies, it dies. Really crazy <laughs> shit, man. That, you know, like I told you guys before, when you tell people that you ran a toll, if you tell normal people, they'll look at you and go, why? It's a corner. What kind of, that'd be I don't have you. time to stop and yeah. open up, roll down my window and aim and put oh it, my yeah, God. I want to fly. Now they got that fucking thing, the, the bing, the quick flight, mm -hmm. and then that motherfucker, at the end the of the month, path. you get a bill for 2000 you're done. If I lived there, I get a bill for two thousand. I'm in the yep. Bronx getting fucking bread. Twenty dollars yep. to go to the fucking Bronx anymore. Yep. <laughs> they they tore all the uh, toll booths down in, in Massachusetts. It's crazy. It's all digital now. Can you imagine? No, that 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 used to be like a bunch of jobs. Fuck. Listen, bro, we're living in communist times without even knowing it. 
They know exactly where all five of us are right now with our phones and our own little stupidity. We logged in on Facebook. <laughs> Everybody knows where we are. Everybody knows what I'm That's the craziest one to me, checking in, <coughs> especially if if you're on vacation. I'm like, I don't want anyone to know I'm on, I'm on vacation. The, my my buddy just got his door kicked in. He I, I flew him out to uh, to Cali with me for the fight. I fly like my boys out, so out there with me all week. Uh, the first day he's gone, his door gets kicked in. He he's in Allentown, PA, or no, Easton, PA. Easton. Door gets kicked in. TV stolen. That's got to be like someone who who you know, right? Up on Facebook. They probably saw that, your Instagram or that, something. Yeah. Seeing that. Yeah. yeah oh, he just, he just got out of up, Cali. You drinking his shit. Yeah, it's they're kicking take your you fucking door. Eighteen hours if you drive back. <laughs> yeah, I'd go in your house, cook eggs, <laughs> do laundry, <laughs> sniff your mom's underwear, <laughs> and then take the piano in eighteen fucking hours. Are you fucking kidding me, dog? I used to work construction. When the first, I, I moved to Snowmass <laughs> in April of '83, and I had a couple jobs, but I wanted a job in Snowmass. I didn't want to go off the hill. If you go to Colorado, sometimes you have to, it would take me like, and it wouldn't be a pain in the ass to go downhill, as they called it, down valley. It was next to Aspen, Snowmass Village. But I got a job, and these fucking, I was walking one day, and I'm talking to this dude, and, he, and I asked him what he was doing. He was remodeling these condos. But this is a fucking filthy rich people that would buy a condo in Aspen, in Snowmass, but they would live in Boston, per se. But they might visit it or they wouldn't visit it. And they'd leave their skis in there, poles, the whole thing. We're working on these things. We had to have the doors open. I would just go in their houses and watch TV and put my feet up and shit. The whole eight weeks I was on the fucking job. Every day I was in a different house watching TV, eating their fucking crackers and shit. They didn't have nothing good in there. Sometimes they had a soda. Who the fuck, who the fuck has that much money? That's that scary. They just, yeah, right? What about them popping in on you? Like, how can you enjoy watching that TV? Because I was doing construction. I had it out. Oh, okay. You had it out. I was just taking a break. No, no, no. My, I wanted to know what happened. Something happened in San Francisco. My uncle lives there in the earthquake. Okay. Oh, it's gotcha. okay. There's always a bullshit. I'm not going to just sit in your house like an asshole. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm... <laughs> but I knew yeah. these people wouldn't come back. You know, I knew the daily report. The guy, the guy that I was doing construction with was telling me. These people ain't coming back. Go into that guy's and turn the power in there. Plug the this and that, plug that and that uh, uh, condo. There was only, it was either like four condos or five condos we were working at. And it was the, the weirdest shape. It was just a fucking, who the fuck knows? What's up, Lee? You got something on your mind, kid? I would just always be like, like that, like that, I think would be the way to do it now. If you were going to be a, a robber, would you, you'd have to like go on social media. That's what I was saying. Like that. Yeah, but you could pack the you whole house. You can't be a up. robber no more because you got to figure seven out of ten people got a camera. Yeah, you cameras. walk in it. Everybody's got a camera, and you know what? You got a mask on. You can fucking dress up like Nixon. It don't give a fuck. They'll get you one way. Or they can another. follow they you that back. Can't camera. They? they got something. And then you have your phone on you. They catch you one way or another. The GPS in your car. You made a phone call from your car. And it hit a satellite that hit the alarm. There's always a by the way now. Run a you red want, light. They take a listen, picture. All you got to do is smoke a joint and watch CSI. You won't even cross the street when the hand is up. <laughs> they got you. They fucking got you. They really got you, man. And, you know, you think about what communism is. is being watched. Not told what to think. But kind of we're being we're watched. Well, every time you lift that fucking computer and you type in your stupidity, you know, I want to see a chick eat a fucking tennis ball with a finger in her asshole. That goes right to the government. Look at this momo, right? All of a sudden, some guy gets a beep, and there you are. Your camera turns on, and there you are, whacking off with this fucking circle on the camera, and they got you on. You don't think they're watching you when you're whacking off on the computer? What do you think? They, what do you think happens? They watch everything. They watch everything, man. But anyway, who gives a fuck? Well, I mean, we're I... all dead already. They all have our <laughs> passwords. They all have everything. They we're dead. Are you? Do you have to worry about that, Mickey? Like even from a like a UFC stand? Like, are you worried about going out to a club and someone instigating something, then you get in trouble with TMZ or anything like that? Um, nah, no, nah, not really. I never look for. It. I never look for fights. But you know, if if something if something happened like that. Yeah, I'd hit him. I'd get out of there quick. Or not not even that. Maybe 
maybe a, like I don't know a a girl or whatever like a Twitter tirade against someone whatever it may be do you ha do you have to think and like calm down or because it like it's I'm always surprised that all these athletes are even allowed to have social media whenever someone has a crazy social media thing happen I'm like I don't get it yeah it's tough man social media it's a weird thing you know you're you're a young guy and stuff and. I mean, it's not like you're out fucking boozing or whatever, but here's the funny thing. In today's fucking world, with what you got going on, you have to kind of live in a bubble for you to achieve your dream, man. You got to be smart. Listen, uh, shit's not going to happen to you when you go with four of your boys for a drink. But we're from Jersey. There's always one fucking knucklehead, bro. And it's that knucklehead. You, you want me to tell you what one day you're going to hear? Hey, man. Remember when we were 13 on Pee Wee's? Remember I fucking tackled you that day? And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and he'll come at you like, what, what, what? And you're like, what are you? And all you want to do is go in there and get a soda, your little <laughs> pizza joint. There's always one of those morons where we're from that, yeah. you know. It's not when you go out to a club. It's. It's always with, uh, you know, that one drunk dude. Dog, you ain't dick, you have, Mr. UFC. <laughs> Remember when we were 12? Remember that? I fucking tackled you, pussy. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I tackled uh, you and you cried. You ain't <laughs> shit, Mr. UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Is it is it fun going back home? Like, do people freak out? Um, dude, I I mean, I haven't been home since the last one, but a after the CM Punk one, everyone, I I'm just, oh, you that guy who beat up CM Punk? Everyone's like, like a gas station across the street. I'm the, yeah, I'm that guy who beat up CM Punk. Look at anybody come up to you and go, bro, you beat up CM Punk. Beat me up, punk. I'll fuck you. Nah, I ain't nah. Up. Soon, soon. Yeah, I'll, I'm waiting God for that. God forbid. <laughs> and you have to giggle. Yeah. Like a guy like you, like, giggles. I have like, guys come up and be like, dude, I was rooting for CM Punk. I'm like, oh, all right. Sorry, buddy. Sorry to do it to you. <laughs> Why would you go up to something in today's world? Just shut your fucking mouth. I was raised, you know what? Shut your fucking People mouth. People are crazy. People are really you must get. You must get a lot of people saying dumb shit. You know what? When people drink at comedy shows, after the shows, they get kind of crazy. But I write it off, man. I write it off in a weird way. Like, they're drinking. I know they ate an edible. They probably started drinking at four. You have to judge the circumstances. This isn't a big city, you know? There's always something, you know? And I just... Yeah. I understand that at this point. And there's always a lot of people there, so there's always a line, so they're always moving, you know? Yeah. Who the fuck knows, man? It was, uh... <clears throat> we were speaking about, before the show, about, like, how, like, not knowing how to, like, how I get, like, really, when I get really stoned, how I can, like, still manage, but I, like, I'm still fucked up. But Joey, you can really manage. What I was thinking about was, isn't it, it's kind of like when people get in a fight and they, like, they kind of go crazy. Like, I've never been in a fight. I think if I got punched, I think I, I wouldn't know what to do. Do you think... It, it, it's kind of comparable to like you know if you got punched like you kind of reacting and and knowing how to handle yourself what do you mean like we were talking about how like for me i have i've built up a tolerance to weed okay. in a way in a, a small way do you think you've built up a tolerance to getting punched in a way like you, it doesn't shock you i don't know in a, in a fucked up way I, I see what you're saying. No, I'd probably, I, no one's like punching me like i just walking down the street though you know what i mean no, like no, if no, I, I'm out no. there like you mean you mean out out no, in the no, wild? No, no, I mean even in the UFC. Uh yeah, I guess you get you get a little desensitized to it. Not your first time getting hit. Yeah, but you've been getting hit. But fuck. Yeah, but know. yeah, but you know you're getting if if you were going into a cage to get in a fight, you'd be like, all right, no, I'm probably gonna get hit. You know what I mean? Right, you probably know that, but I mean, fighting CM Punk, having fought CM Punk, did you did you think he was shocked? Do you, do you think he was like? Unprepared. Oh yeah, man. Ma yeah, maybe. I don't think anyone hit. No, I don't think anyone hit him the way I hit him. You right. Know? So yeah, that probably opened his eyes a little bit. But you got the adrenaline and all that stuff going. I'm so, no, no. I'm gonna. I, who knows? I could be way too stoned. But it just it you're way too fucking stoned. <laughs> trust me. You're trying to confuse the guy. You're worse than my wife. 
My wife and I ordered something, and the wrong order got there. And she's like, call him up. And I'm going to call him up. And all of a sudden she goes, uh-oh, I think I might have fucked up. And I go, I know you did. Because you talk too much. You confused him. You confused yourself out of the fucking game. Two weeks ago, the baby wants to go to McDonald's. I hate fucking McDonald's. But I go to McDonald's as a joke. As a joke. A month before that, I said to her, wow, that McRib don't look too bad. Listen, I wouldn't need a fucking McRib. <laughs> If you gave me a thousand dollars, it looks good, and I want to eat that fucking thing, but I know I'm gonna fucking die if I eat that thing. We go up to the counter. The dude barely speaks English. I order the baby the six piece McNugget. My wife wants the fucking quarter pound. You know what? I'll take a quarter pound. And she goes, "I know you're thinking about the fucking the whatever." I don't say nothing. <laughs> Next thing you know, there's a fucking big rib there because the dude don't fucking I blow. And she just brings shit up. And then she she confuses herself sometimes. And I told her, this is what happens when you fucking bring that shit up. Tonight, she fucked up the order again. And now that's Lee. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck you're saying. What happens if you get hit? If he, He's been fighting. How long have you been fighting for? Eight years. Eight years. Yeah. How many times did you get hit in the head already? Psh, I don't know. A lot. Okay. All right. Have you, have you had a broken nose? No. All right. God bless your fucking soul. Yeah. And you yeah, never knock will. On, yeah. But he's been hit, Lee. The way you have experience in coming in here. Exactly. The way you have experience how to download the podcast and how to navigate a podcast if it gets lost. Unlike you and myself, I fucking, if, if you pass my guard and land on top of me and grab my shoulder, I see fucking stars. I don't even need to get hit anymore. You understand me? He has already built that tolerance. Exactly, yeah. You know, that's why the first time I saw when Brock Lesnar fought that guy. Overeem? No. And Velasquez? The Mir? white dude. The white dude mm -hmm. from Denver that hits hard. That's, he's herring? No, that's threatening to come back. Oh. Uh, big muscle. Shane dude. Carwin. Shane Carwin. Yeah. One of the first things I noticed when he fought Shane Carwin, Shane Carwin popped him. And fucking, if you see, he covered his face. Mm -hmm. I could tell right there he had never been punched in the fucking face before. They're big dudes like that, they don't get hit because they're so big, people don't want to... No, I got an email three or four days later from somebody saying, don't you know that when you train with him, you're not allowed to hit him in the face? Huh. Why do that? Then why do this? This is a game where you get... you. Hit. The number one thing is recovery. When I was fucking six, I got hit in the head with a flashlight. Took me 18 years to recover. Fight me for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I was 24, one day I woke up. What happened? A, B, C, D. I got hit in the fucking head with a flashlight in Central Park. That's a true story. It took me a day and a half to recover from the shock. It was the first time my life virginity had been broken because, you know, for you to get in a fucking ring, for you to get up one day and go, you know what? I think I'm going to become a fucking fighter. Something must have happened. You must have bitch slapped the motherfucker one day after a football game or <laughs> thrown somebody up against the wall or there was this one certain guy that everybody thought that was a badass. You just tormented his fucking life. You understand me? So if one day you realize you want to do this, you go in there, the dude trains you for a few weeks, then come spar Thursday, whatever. You go in there, the guy looks like fucking me in heat, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, your nose is broken, your ear is huge. Your stomach hurts. You're bleeding from everywhere. The guy that comes back the next day. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's the guy. Right there, that's it. This guy's going to tell you he broke a rib. It's floating. I used to spar five days a week at AMA Fight Club. You know AMA Fight Club, right? Mike Constantino. No. Jim and Dan Miller. Where is it? Oh, no. Okay. In Jersey. In Jersey. In Whippany. Whippany. Now, how far is Whippany from your house? 20. 20 minutes. 20, 25, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's where that's where like I cut my teeth training with those guys. Jim Dan Miller, uh Charlie Brenneman. So that's a yeah. great jujitsu base right there. Yeah. And we used to, and I, I used to like I didn't grow, grow up fighting that much. Like, I get in a couple of scraps as a kid. But I yeah, I was sparring five days a week then. Just like it was which is way too much. But I was you know, I was like I was like twenty, just loving it, just having fun. Full MMA sparring? Uh yeah, and just sometimes just like Take you know, downs. kickboxing. Yeah. Uh yeah. Not not every day. Like I I do like the I do the Muay Thai sparring one day. And then yeah, I'd 
three three days a week. I do the pro practices where it was yeah we we're sparring. Well, jiu jitsu is solid, huh? Yeah, yeah. Solid like a motherfucker. Yeah. You, you, gotta, you know, can't take that away nah. from you, Tarzan. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Where else do you train? Uh, Gracie, New Jersey. That's where my jiu jitsu got. Like, and where's that? At? It's in uh, Clinton, Clinton, Southwest, right off like that exit seventeen off seventy eight. Oh boy, you're way out there. Yeah, that's west. I know Clifton. Clifton, that's north. Yeah, yeah. that's north. That's yeah. by Route Three. Yeah, there used to be a driving theater there. That's why I first saw kung fu movies and shit. Like yeah, that. but Clifton, and that's the Israeli guy. That's in Clinton. That's the Israeli. Israeli guy. guy. Yeah, David Adib. Badass. Oh, I could just a fucking jujitsu Jew. Those motherfuckers yeah. ain't fucking around with Krav Maga weapons. No, no. You fucking get him in an arm bar, he still has a flying star in his game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're like, what the fuck happened? I had yeah. a flying star in my gi. That's Jewish jujitsu. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they know that. That's Jew jitsu. What, that's real Jew jitsu right there. As you're taking that arm back yeah. for the arm bar, and you're like, watch my hip. You're really a fucking. Man. <laughs> 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 what happened? I don't know. Yeah, that's uh, that's a different fucking level jungle type yeah. shit. They add some of that shit to it. Lee, how you feeling over there? Right oh there? my god, I'm feeling. Oh, I, I'm going through changes tonight. For are sure. you? <laughs> <laughs> those those chocolate, whatever. What are those called? Space bars? Moon moon, moon, moon bars. bars. Oh my god, I have to not breathe. That that's my trick. I just I just don't breathe out of my nose, and that's why I make noises because it's just as soon as it hits the back of my throat, it's like it's crazy. See. Everything's gonna be all right. We work it all out. <laughs> What's the story? You want to fight in Brooklyn? Um, that's that's a nice one. That's a nice card. February Maybe. 11th. It's quick. That'd be a quick turnaround. I got a. Yeah. See, I got the stitches. I got eight stitches. I um. I I got twenty. I got twenty one. Uh, three weeks before CM Punk, I had to hide that. Oh. And then the doctor's like, "You got to give it six months for the collagen." I was like, "Fuck that! I'm fighting." And then I took a, this other quick fight. So uh, this is the things I, I got. I should probably give it a little time. Yeah, yeah thanks. Brooklyn's quick bro. turnaround. But dude, I got to show you. Actually, you'd probably, th- you'd probably faint if I showed you the picture. I won't show you that. Yeah, I don't want to see that. I'm just thinking just about talking Kyle about it, I see you change a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up. That's the hardest part. That, oh, my God, after you get cut or something, they just wipe that blood. Right there, I would tap. I go, listen, enough is enough. I made me feel good. When uh, when I got cut in this fight, I was like, ooh, I like this. That warm blood on your ooh, face. Ooh, I like it this. It drives some people crazy. That's what I, it's supposed to be. It. That's that's when the party starts. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's when it. I just, I just Anybody who knows dangerous. anything knows once that first blood, everything's all right. You want to bitch slap me? You want to kick me in the leg? That's all right. I ain't going to do nothing for nobody. Yeah. But once motherfucker sees he's bleeding, that's when the party's now done. Now what? Now, now what? what? <laughs> now you motherfucker, watch this and shit. Watch you. Go ahead. What's up, Lee Sayer? Why are you looking at me all fucked up? Lay your head back. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Lay your head back if you're going to fuck me. We're going to eat it. I thought we were going to eat another star of respect for Hanukkah this weekend. Absolutely. What the fuck? Let's do this shit. Do this shit. Do this shit. Do this shit. What? Do this shit. Look at your fucking bad motherfucker that, I've representing always, Jersey and shit. All day. You don't go to other pl- jiu-jitsu places at all? You don't go to... I've been out in Manhattan, the Henzo's. Get some right. work there. There's great guys there. But uh, like technique-wise, I mean, yeah, David Adiv, he's is your man. sharp. He's like, he's like going to be... Well, it shows. No, yeah. it shows, man. Like, yeah. Yeah, it fucking shows. You have to... Strangling people, man. Yeah, all that. That was tremendous. Yeah. That was tremendous. I just sat there. But I saw the countdown later that night. I remember that time. Oh, fuck, I did tape it. What happened to that thing? I saw two little girls and you. I'm like, I'm starting to get this picture here. This could become fucking deadly. This is New Jersey and shit. Now you got to go back this summer and jump in that water. That water tough and shit. New Jersey? I go. Every, I would go every weekend. See, that's that's a, that's a secret, right? That's yeah. what nobody's got over. I was tan for the CM Punk flicks. I was in the water every every weekend. Yeah, yeah. All that nuclear that. energy. Love it. And all that New Jersey waste gets that in ocean. Here. Ooh, they can't fucking stop. Nah, it. and you know nah. it's all over. Um, yeah. You're like fucking Spider Man. They don't even know yeah. it. They don't even know it. They I don't think like they saw the test for that. They can't. They can't even pick. They that have up. no fucking idea. That beach was polluted <laughs> with hypodermic needles twenty years dude, ago. Dude, Are I've been going there my whole life. My grandma. 
and my grandparents lit, owned a house in LBI right near the, yeah. the beach. So I go, all summer. That water toughens you up like a oh, motherfucker. Yeah. They don't even know. They gotta check check deep, deep, deep <laughs> into the cells and shit and yeah. see the makeup of the diabolic and yes. there's oil slicks in there and mafia bodies and <laughs> fucking everything. Jimmy Hoffa, all the Jimmy Hoffa <laughs> dust and the whole fucking deal and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Alpha does. I like that one. You, you should sell that. that on your on your site. <laughs> <laughs> you make a killing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Don't make me laugh. No, I'm starting to get really high on those edibles. <laughs> you make my adrenaline go up, you cocksucker. <laughs> See, this is the part I don't like. There's a part where this is the part where there's a part where your head just hums. And I could deal with the humming and, and hearing, you know, the loud noises and the fucking yelling, and I could deal with all that. It's when I have to do something very physical. Then I turn my head real quick while I laugh. That's when I feel, oh shit, this could get ugly. So then I gotta start breathing out of my nose. I gotta go back to the island of Serenity. <laughs> <laughs> I get the party started. I'm back, bitch. Do you still go to the island of Serenity? Every time. Every oh time I lose gosh. control. How many years ago was that? Five, four years ago. Oh. But it works for me, cocksucker, all right? Every no, I just things... love that. You went to like two sessions with her and you That's still right. use it. Why not? Oh. It was a buck twenty a session. I gotta get that down to fifty dollars a day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I give the fucking animals. Fifty dollars a day? What a... 50 cents a day. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. It calms me down. It still works. Oh, you know you want me to say what's up to you? Who? Uh, Todd Duffy. Todd. Oh, that fucking savage. I'm doing that... his uh, his podcast tomorrow. I'm calling in. The, the Fighter's Opinion. Now, where is he? He's in Santa Cruz. Is that what I was saying earlier? Yeah. Santa Cruz. Fuck, that's a good place. Yeah, he's a good dude. He is a good dude. He is yeah. a good dude. I haven't seen him. When I do San Jose or something, he shows up. I bumped into him into a UFC. Where's he fighting now? UFC still. Uh yeah, yeah. He's um I think he he's has something coming up. He, he was talking and he was talking about talking to you about auctioning off his cor- one of his corner tickets. Like one of the people to be in his corner. Okay. I don't know, he'll talk to you about it. Okay, I hope yeah, so. He wants yeah. To, yeah. Auction off his corner tickets. Wow. That'd be so great. like someone could like go and walk out with him to be the back. It's kind of a cool idea. It is a great idea. I would never want to be in somebody's corner. I'm the kiss of death. I can, if you put me strategically, I can yell. And I give you little instructions in different languages. What's that? It's intense. What, the corner? Be, like guy? being in the corner? Like when, like I had a buddy, my buddy El Jaraboli fight recently. All of a sudden it hits you. You get nervous. Like Because it, you can't control it. When it's you, at least you can control it. It's just him going in there. Be choked it out 26 seconds. So no problem. I could never go to one of your fights. Nah. Just no, because I got to know you and I got to like you. I don't want to know nothing. Tell me later. Yeah. I could watch it on TV, but I could never go see you. My grandma watched this one. I told her not to. I told her not to watch any of them. She watched this one. She called me today. You and know, what? I watched. And what did she say? She, she, she was like, well, I looked away when on the parts I didn't like, but... Oh, yeah, God. dude, I, she felt bad for CM Punk after she watched my last one. She's like, how could you do that to him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not for them. How good is that feeling to have your family watch on TV? I have no family to watch me, no mom and no dad. How great is it that your family is still alive to watch them on to watch on TV? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm you fortunate, know, man. They I'm went happy. Taped your family. They all How came out. Great is that? Yeah, they all they all flew out. I see them stressing out all week. Trying to keep oh, them yeah. calm. Oh fuck! You know? I could never imagine having a son going into the fucking octagon and shit, and me going to the fight. I could never even imagine it. My head would blow up. I'm not cut out for that type of shit. I'm really it's not. Rough, my yeah. head would blow up. My head goes somewhere else, man. At those things. Like one time, I got to talk to Anderson Silva, and I got to talk to him again. And I went to a fight one time where he got into trouble. Like I was ready to get a gun. Like, I'm old school. Like, get the fucking gun, dog. This is getting deep. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm in a fucking UFC fight. Just because I, uh, I know him don't mean I got to fucking go in there. Like, I get. So I don't go. I just. Once somebody I like is on the card, I won't go to those fights. 
I'll watch them at the house, but I'll get up, I'll go outside and smoke a joint, make believe I don't know nothing. <laughs> then I'll come in, he'll win, and I'll go, I knew he was going to win, I just can't fucking watch. I get too nervous, I don't like that shit. Yeah, it's rough. It it's rough. rough. That's why watching, I applaud. Like I was, have I watched Jim your Miller. your parents, brother. I applaud your parents. Yeah. Give them a big hug when you get home. Oh, man. I will. Yeah, they're yeah. cool motherfuckers that yeah. they went to see and they got balls of steel. Do you like, you would have loved my dad. I'm surprised you guys didn't. Yeah. You guys probably crossed paths back they in the day. Back. Did he go to Bergen County Jail? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. His uh, the, the la- after my last fight, his friends were up telling me like, dude, your dad was he was like the baddest guy in New Jersey. He was like he was the toughest guy in New Jersey. He and he was like he was a football player. Like he tried out for the Giants. It wasn't like a troublemaker, but he he throw it down. Like they they had stories. Wild stories. What high school did he go to? Watch him. He went to no. He went to Manalapan. He went to St. John Vianney for a little bit. Beat like he like started. He was starting football. And then he got in a bunch of. He got in a couple of fights with like the seniors. And then he had he got like he had to leave there. Went to Manalapan. The only kids I remember when I was growing up and down the shore, Pete Panuska from Brick. Okay. Brick, that's you, right? Around here. Yeah. And Brick, and there was a kid, Craig Hayward, that just died recently. He played in the NFL, Craig Hayward, Ironhead. He was big out of, like, Montclair or something. No, 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 he was from somewhere else. But I'll tell you what, man, when I was about, I got left back, right? Not because I was stupid, but because I fell in love with this girl and started dry humping it. This is a true story <laughs> in the sixth grade, in the seventh grade, so I got left back. And this is a fucked up story. Like, I liked basketball. At that time, I used to go to karate every fucking day. Then Bruce Lee died, and I kept going to karate. I went to karate in Union City, New Jersey, at this Gushin Ru karate place. And he would check your report card. If you didn't get good grades, he'd still make you come in, do the jumping jacks and the push-ups. But when he taught, you'd have to do your homework. And then he checked it after. By the time he had a, By the time he stopped teaching, you had to have your homework fucking done. This is old school. The guy was like an ex-Marine and shit. You didn't want to go to those classes. Mm-hmm. But I liked what he did. I liked what he did, and I was okay. But when I started dry humping that girl, I stopped going to class. Why well, go to karate class when you're dry yeah, humping yeah. some chick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we weren't even having sex, and I was already fucking in love with her. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. driving me fucking bananas. So I got left back. I just had to start from the seventh grade. She wouldn't let me dry humping no more because I got left back. Once you get left back, you can't dry hump somebody. I ain't going to dry hump this fucking loser. <laughs> dry hump this fucking loser. You left back in the seventh grade. Who gets left back in the seventh grade? Fuck. And one night, man, I'm watching the NCAA fucking finals. I swear to God. I'm just sitting there. I don't know nothing about nothing. I'm into basketball. I'm interested in basketball. I could fucking rebound. I could I could jump, you know. I I'm not a great shooter, but whatever. And I'm watching this fucking basketball game. And they're announcing the starting this is national motherfucking TV. And they're announcing the starting five players from North Carolina. You know what it's like to go to North Carolina? That's like fucking being a UFC fighter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And submitting a motherfucker on national television. Yeah. That's what it's like to go to North Carolina, where that was the Stops. basketball, that was the... Top. And North Carolina played Marquette on national television for the national championship. This other team's coach was retiring that night, but fucking North Carolina was on a fucking roll. But somebody had gotten hurt in North Carolina, and there was an adjustment. And I'll never forget that they they announced the, the center and then the the two guards and then the forward and the forward when they said he was from Jersey City, New Jersey, my fucking head blew up. I was like, what the fuck? Did he just say? And all of a sudden they started talking about this kid. They're like, this kid is a savage. And I'm like, a savage from New Jersey, a savage. And they're like, he, the player before him, got hurt on Saturday and he went in there into the final four and scored 31 motherfucking points as a six man <laughs> nobody's ever done that as a six man now he, they just said fuck it start him in the finals and he was just a skinny motherfucking white kid and you know he's 
there's ten dudes on the fucking thing in those days, and there was only one white dude, and it was this dude, battling it out. And he stayed, got like 14 points and like eight rebounds, but after that, I was like, fuck it. If some kid from Jersey City could do it on national TV, we got to figure something out here, man. This kid was, and then the reports came out. He's still around, Michael Corrin. He's an announcer somewhere for TNT somewhere. But I'll never forget that moment. Like, that made me so fucking happy. And I didn't even know him. I can't imagine what your fucking family feels like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> it's got to be crazy. You're going to go home. There's a parade and watch <laughs> on. <you. laughs> Well, how did your jiu-jitsu school feel? Because that, that, that would have been, like, especially since you submitted, I think, all three? Yeah. 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 So you submitted all three. Like, like, they must get pissed if you do anything wrong. Like, have any, <laughs> have any of your coaches been like, nah, that yeah, was good, I but the, I couldn't the, let them down. Yeah. The, uh, the technique was a little, <laughs> you should put the foot here. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, was, yeah, they're, they're happy. It's a team win, man. But, like, when I win, that's all of us. When, you know, someone else from the team wins, team effort. You got some Jersey pride and shit. Hell yeah. You ready to rock and roll? Dude, you got to tell one of the Jersey stories that the world isn't ready for. One of the ones you've been holding back. (coughs) For the people. Let them know what's up. I have no idea. I don't even think that dark anymore. (laughs) 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 I have a child now. I've erased all those dark memories. Every once in a while, my body twitches (laughs) in the middle of the night. I'm like, oh, Lord, please help me. (laughs) <laughs> don't let those memories come back to me at all. They're fucking hystericals. I don't, you know, man, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of sad stories. There's just fucking funny stories. I don't even know anymore. Who the hell knows, man? I forgot to go on somebody's podcast three weeks ago. Like, that's how bad. I was so busy, I forgot. Like, who the fuck knows about dark, deep stories anymore? Jesus Christ, and tonight I'm fucked up. Let me tell you something, that, that transmission fluid. If Did you a want, number? Huh? Did a number on you? Yeah, that transmission fluid fucks you up. Yeah. I can barely think talking you, to you. You really think it's the transmission fluid? I think it's that chocolate. Oh, the chocolatation to murky waters also. It's like a it's like a fucking boat. What do you do what are we doing in Jersey with the water slide? We we always know a friend that takes us on the boat and we water ski. Water ski oh. What's that called? People do it down the shore. Come on, guys. Come on, Bill. What the fuck? What is it? Tubing. Not tubing. It's something else. The same point. Wakeboarding? What is it? Wakeboarding? No, it's the ski. Water skiing. Water skiing. Water skiing. skiing. You know, I remember I was telling on the Rogan (laughs) podcast. We used to go down the shore. And before you went over the bridge to Seaside, you dropped cages. Yeah, you dropped cages into the fucking ocean. And on the way home, you came back and there were crabs in there. And you'd go home and my friends would make Italian red sauce with the fucking crab. Those are my memories from Jersey, Doug. That's All that shit. fucking craziness there. What do you eat a lot of in Jersey? Ah, you, everything. You live at home? Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm clean though. I eat pretty clean. Do you? Yeah. No Chinese? Uh sometimes. Why, you got a recommendation? Nah, you down and watch them. I don't know nobody down there. Yeah. I don't know nobody. Yeah. How fun. I don't even know. How to get some, to watch? They got some no? good sushi over there. It's a good sushi spot. There's one good, really good place. No, Mr. Pies. Listen, shit. bro. Japanese have taken over New Jersey. They got good fucking sushi. Oh know? yeah. In New Jersey. Oh, yeah. what, what are you laughing about, Lee? I just like the image of Japanese taking over New Jersey. <laughs> 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 Do you remember in South Park when the Japanese swords? were uh, killing the dolphins? Oh, you, huh? <laughs> Do you remember? I don't. You don't. You don't watch South Park, but in South Park they were coming in and killing dolphins randomly. <laughs> So that's just my image of <laughs> But in New Jersey. You could get good sushi in Jersey. I forgot all about that. Yeah. yeah. In Fort Lee, New Jersey, it's I think it's the number one or number two highly Asian population in the yeah. country. It was kinda of men's in the eighties. It just took off. I don't you know. They got good sushi in Fort Lee, Jack. Yeah. Well, they got good food everywhere in New Jersey. That's the that's the great thing about Jersey. There's always a diner. Oh, yeah. that's the best. Diners are the best. There's a I lot went, of them too. I had to meet somebody to eat today, and I went to we went to Stout, and uh, we had the fries and the the burger and uh, tremendous fucking burger. You know, great fries. 
but those fries need some fucking gravy on them. They put the mozzarella on them, yeah. and they're skinny fries, and they cheese them up pretty good, but they need a little gravy on them to take you back to that little cheeseburger deluxe, 11 o'clock, you have it before you go home. Those little steak fries, you go home, that's like a fucking, ooh, a sleeping pill. You sleep like a baby under that blanket with a little <laughs> cheeseburger deluxe in you. Dog, the other night, I saw the longest line ever for In-N-Out Burger. I have ever seen in the history that I have lived here. Even longer than Hollywood. Hollywood line gets some long, I mean, guys, some fucking long lines up that street. What do you mean, like three or four cars? This was way past the office. This was a block south past the office. That's how long. We used to have like an old cars? office on Lancashire. It was fucking crazy on Sunday night. I was like, who would wait in that type of line for a cheeseburger? What animal would wait on that type of line? It kind of yeah. makes me want to time it, but then I'd have to wait there and time it. And you might as well shoot yourself. You can't wait there. <laughs> Unless you bring a cheeseburger with you. Makes fast food slow. There was a line today at the Jack in the Box, right next to where I live. It was like at lunchtime... Like down the street, I was like, "What's happened?" I never got it for lunch. Yes, you did. Uh, a couple you times, did. but mostly for dinner. Where should we hit for dinner out here? When tonight? You haven't had dinner yet. Nah, we're gonna you're, eat. You're fucked. I'm fucked. Nah, you're gonna go to Sunset, and you're gonna go to a place named. That's perfect. We're going to a comedy store anyway. Yeah, if you want to go to the Sunset, if you're gonna go to Sunset, this place is. Uh, what time is it? 940. I can't call the house. My wife well, Joey, what, what about Sushi Dan? I don't want them to spend 2000 fucking dollars. Okay. For fucking, uh, and I don't know any place that they could go to sushi that would just be neutral. So, what I would recommend is that Israeli place on Sunset. You go in there and get a nice piece of salmon okay. with mashed potatoes, but I don't know the fucking name. Aroma. Of Aroma. There you go. Boom. Bam. And Boom. you go right from Aroma to the comedy store. What else is close to the comedy store? The taco place on the corner. Uh, what else? Not mad at tacos. Mac McDonald's. They have Norm's. Fuck that. <laughs> uh, the sandwich place by the Laugh Factory. What's that? That Ralph, you found ants in the sandwiches? No. <laughs> I'll steer clear. So your best bet for the bang is that Aroma. Nice little piece of salmon. See what's on the menu. Lee. You read the menu. They have nice, but look, he's already get the menu. You guys probably aren't used to. Lee has a menu for everything. He's got That's ten apps. Name. Lee don't fuck around. No, I don't bro. have the internet. <laughs> he's got ten apps. Plus, he's got Yelp control. Plus, he's got I Spy Network. He's the only shitty a... thing is you have to pay to park. Huh. There's always a by the way, Lee. Just what's the menu? I'm looking. You're on Sunset. What do you think's going to happen? You want to fucking park? It's up here, too, though. What do you mean it's up here? I had to valid. I had to get a uh, validation to go to Starbucks in uh, Studio City. Okay, here we go. I have no idea what he's talking about. You know, you, there's a one on, like, Coldwater or something, somewhere around there, that has, like, uh, you, have to get a, you have to get, like, a ticket from a machine. Okay. They have a bunch of sandwiches. Do you want to read the sandwiches? What's the location? Now skip the sandwiches. What's the location? Um, I have to go there. Sorry. It's like Sunset in Hollywood. Yeah. What is it? Sunset in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 70, 70, 73, 73 Sunset. Yeah, that makes sense. Because a comedy store is 8235 or 8253 or something like that. So this is right before the Guitar Center. If you hit the guitar center, you went too far. You valet park in there because the parking's a motherfucker and there's clubs. It's goddamn fucking Tuesday night and these savages are out. And you park in there and you go in there. There was like three things I would get in there that were fantastic. But they used to give you this bread, like a grape bread with raisins in it. Hollow? This, this is, when you put olive oil on it, fucking tremendous. It tasted like grapes. Nice. Fucking tremendous. I don't know how it is now. Do it I can to be, eat now? 
Because I, I was cutting. Oh, no, 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 no. You go to toy. You like Thai food, right? Yeah. There you go, toy. What about toy? what about the Italian place in Hollywood? You There's taking no notes Italian over there, Bill? They're yeah. from New Jersey. I'm going to embarrass okay. them. <laughs> okay, too. I'm going to embarrass them and take them to some fucking Italian place. They're from Jersey. What they have on their corner is better whatever yeah. shit they're going to get here. What they have on their corner is better than they should here. I wouldn't recommend these two savages pizza or sandwiches. <laughs> you see what he said? Uh, I don't eat no fucking sandwiches. Nah. He got down the block from him with blindfolds on. <laughs> he get the best fucking sandwich <laughs> that will kill any fucking sandwich. Well, there's a place in Santa Monica. They get the, <laughs> they get the Jersey bread. No, you fucking don't. No, you don't. If I drive to Santa Monica and I ain't that Jersey bread, I'm going to be fucking pissed off. I ain't that Jersey bread. You should. You got. You two should go to Jersey Mike's. And no, talk to him. We Jersey got that in bread. Jersey, too. That's the embarrassment to a guy like me. Yeah. I can't understand how Jersey Mike's, after like a week, somebody don't go in there and go, listen, <laughs> the charade is Cut over. The shit. All right, the charade <laughs> is over. I, I tolerated it for a week. I thought you'd go away, but there's a bunch of fucking idiots that have no self-respect for themselves. <laughs> no self-respect for themselves, okay? No self-respect for themselves. I forget the guy's fucking name, and I'm, it'd be too late to call my friend. When I lived on 85th Street in Grand, if you walked to the corner and made a left up the hill, there was a guy in there. He didn't have a full grocery store, but he always had Thuman's bologna, Duman's ham and that fucking uh, sliced American cheese that he'd slice fresh and shit. He got shot three times one time. He got robbed for like $80. The next day, that motherfucker was dead, tip top condition. You understand? <laughs> you three know, bullets. Three bullets. But the funny thing is, he made sandwiches. <laughs> I was going to say, who? He is? sold beer. <laughs> if you were like eight and you brought a nut from your mother, he'd give you a gallon of vodka. He was one of those dudes. <laughs> if you came home, my mother said to give you this. And give you this twenty dollar bill. He'd give you a gallon of vodka, a carton of cigarettes, and a book of matches. Tell your mother I love her. He was one of those fucking dudes. Or he put it on a tab. I had a tab with him. Brilliant. This guy worked all his life there. Guess what happens? Jersey Mike comes along and opens up down the corner and now these fucking same people who've been buying great coke cuts, great white bread from this guy go down the corner because they have a foot long. <laughs> for, for six ninety five or whatever the fuck it is, <laughs> bro. They have, and I have nothing against these restaurants. I get it. They have a uh, whatever. What's an olive? What is it? Olive Garden on Times Square. Yeah. What does that tell you? Ugh. Who would fucking walk in there? It's like Again. when you see the Sabaro in yeah, fucking New York. You're yeah. like, are you crazy? Why would you go to Sabaro? What type of animal? What type of fucking retard are you? <laughs> and, you know, and again, you know, they have all these hey KKKs and all these things. Why don't like fucking twenty two angry white guys shave their heads and just start going into these places? Listen, it was okay for me. again. Olive Garden got to go. This is New York. We're not having it. No, listen. First, the fucking Italians can make it. Then we'll let a couple of Greeks make Italian food. And a couple fucking uh, Mexicans make, and what's the other ones that are half Italians? Russians. No, they because yeah, they're making it too. No, Albanians. One of the, Albanians. Albanians. Boom. Go they call. own half of New Jersey. Yeah. Bam. There you go. They yeah. own half yeah, they're of New run, Jersey. They're they're deep. Yeah. yeah, they will grow a mustache yeah. and tell you they're Italian. <laughs> they don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah, one of the true. best Italian restaurants in Jersey is Albanian owned. The I forget the, what the girl's name is. She's a radio DJ or something. There's there's a there's a real good one. Uh, my I have a my close cousins are in Harrington Park in Bergen County. Um, they got a restaurant right near there, a good Italian place. I couldn't tell the name though. There's so many. That's what I miss. But when I go home, I know there's, but there's still this place where I grew up named Roma. Oh my God, the best fucking stromboli in the world, and. They're one of the few places that makes a shrimp parmesan. Are you kidding me or what? How come you didn't take me there? Because I took you for Chinese, the important things. You could eat pizza, but it doesn't matter. What's your Chinese dish? I, what would, you get? I would never take you for pizza anywhere, anywhere <laughs> ever again. 
because you'll still come back and go up to that fucking place, revolt, whatever the fucking name of it, and get stand on line to eat fucking manufactured outside the U.S. dough. That dough comes in ship from like Bulgaria or something like that. <laughs> It, for everyone, it, it, he doesn't like Pizza Rev. Yeah. Pizza what? Pizza Rev. And one of those places where you go and you can like, it's like the Chipotle of pizza. Gotcha. Yeah, he doesn't like that. It, it, it's not that I don't like it. It's the same reason why I don't it, like fucking Olive Garden. I don't like fucking Jersey Mike's. It's the same reason. Because you're going in there with a half-loaded gun and you're cutting into the motherfuckers that are really doing the job. gun? Sure, it's a half-loaded gun, and these it's more. It's not the real deal. No, so these idiots go in there, and for two dollars left, and that's why real people would never come out here and open up a restaurant, because here's a guy like your dad, who's fifty-three, puts away his life savings, but he has a secret pizza recipe. Every time he makes his pizza, people pull their hairs out of their head. He he borrows his money. He borrows ten thousand from her. 20000 from Lee, comes out here, he gets a great location, he's making pizzas, he's making a great living, man, but he's working six days a week, dog. This don't come easy, and every day it's a hundred fucking pies. And all of a sudden, he's waiting there, smoking a cigarette outside, and he sees a family of three eating fucking a box of Domino's pizza. Meanwhile, this guy gets the fucking cheese shipped in from Milwaukee, he gets the nice tomatoes from a communist garden, you know. San Marzano. Yeah, saying. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what happens. And all of a sudden you lose faith and go, why would I keep making this quality when they're never going to come over here? Domino's has me with the advertising. And it's seven ninety nine plus they get sausage sticks. They get butter fucking out. What else do you get? You get three chicken wings. Cheesy bread. Cheesy bread, you know. Lava cake. Lava cake, so that's the problem. And then there's suckers. Then there's people who say, I wouldn't eat that shit if I was on a fucking island. My mom says my grandfather would roll over in his grave oh. if, he, if, if we were in the Olive Garden. It's a very fucking embarrassing thing. Yeah. And not for people... Listen, when I go to Pittsburgh, I gotta go to the Olive Garden. There's places I go to, and I don't eat the pasta. I get the, oh, you can eat buns and salad and soup. <laughs> it's the best bread day. You get that imitation pasta for Zool and the mm -hmm. salad. Let me tell you something. The best thing they have is that salad. The, oh, you can eat salad if it's crispy. If you go later, the thing sogs in the vinegar and oil, and then you have fucking, you have vinegar and oil soup. No, no, no. Mm. When they first whack that motherfucker up, it's not bad. Trust me, I'm telling you. I've been in some Dirk Merck situations in Pittsburgh and it was right next to the hotel it was fucking snowing what do you want me to walk around <laughs> I don't live in fucking Pittsburgh there's a comedy club and there's a fucking whatever it's called what are we talking about here Olive Garden Olive Garden thank <laughs> you my love one person's paying attention where, where are you headed Ali tonight I, th well, I knew we Olive Garden but I, th I thought you meant before Olive Garden you want another star Lee is sure. it time for another star oh. <laughs> it's always Boom. time for another just star just like this look at this we haven't even put a dent in this this weekend <laughs> You should be ashamed of yourself, Lisa. Yeah. Are you ready for a star death? No, All right, bad. then. The body <laughs> the body of Christ compels you and shit. <laughs> it's like the exorcist, Lee. Tell him. The body of Christ compels you. <laughs> I got to get a look at these little warlocks. The body of Christ <laughs> compels you. <laughs> 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 It's savage. Savage. Ugh. Was that one? What? Let's keep one more. Wait a no, 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 the no. body of Christ <laughs> compels you, Lisa. No, 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 no. One more. We're going deep. Can we split it? My, no, split what? Uh, what, is, what is it? Third grade? Split it. <laughs> We're going deep into the murky wars. Lisa, yet. let me explain something to you. Come on, Lee. We go deep all year long. This is the... The last four days before Hanukkah. It's a Christmas this is a new episode. holiday that we're starting here. For Cuban Jews that take it back to Egypt. This is it. We're starting a new organization for people who mean business. This is the last four days before Hanukkah. This is how are we gonna act? How are you gonna fuck? What do you wanna sing? What do you wanna do? Eat another star. Look at this. The body of Christ compels you. You ever see the Godfather? Absolutely. The first one before they baptize him, the priest goes, 
<laughs> like this, look. <laughs> One more for the road, dog. Like, let us get it. Fuck it. You, t- you got Uber tonight, right? This is going to be an interesting. You got money left on the lift card? <laughs> <laughs> I better. <laughs> oh, God, Jesus Christ. Can I get up? Fuck it. Leave it for the mouse. But no, no eat that <laughs> one. It's good for you. That one's got shoestrings up. <laughs> oh, I'm so high. It's over there. I got you, Lee. I got you. Right there. Oh, uh, not too Be oh. careful! Don't don't lick your fingers like that because <laughs> you're still in competition or something. <laughs> don't, it's okay. There's some. It's only weed on it. That's all. That's, that's, that's what's on the floor. Oh my god. Come on, put that bad boy away. They're gonna kick me out as soon as I walk into the casino. <laughs> it's gonna happen again. Uh, why did I kick you out? <laughs> Look at my eyes. This <laughs> is going away in 12 hours. <laughs> oh, okay. Fuck it. That's it, it's Damn. over. That's it. You swallow it, you drink some water. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> you ready to party, Jack? <laughs> I can do it. I can do it once again. Oh, fuck. You still got it. My body's like, no, please. <laughs> please don't do it. Uh, look at poor Lisa. I, uh, I want to take a minute and wish you guys a, a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. And thank you for supporting us all year. You guys are some great fucking people. And uh, sometimes you just go off the rails here. Look at Lee. <laughs> Holding on to his nose, drinking his last batch. It's the holidays, bitches. <laughs> You want to be sad? Be sad on your own time. There's no reason to be sad. Come on. You got family. You got peeps and shit. People get sad this time of the year. You got to do the opposite. Take a deep breath. Look for the future. And get ready to get your dick sucked. That's all you can think about. You know what I'm saying? You're looking straight ahead. Sure. Fuck these mother. How you feeling, Lee? Look at you. And so this is Christmas. Go, Lee. That's <laughs> it. And what have you done? Now you can say... And what have you done? Tell them what have you done. Oh, Dean, on weed. You did. Huh? You did 1,500 milligrams. Is that what we did? Oh. 400 days before Hanukkah. Oh. And so that's <laughs> what you did. 400. All right, so when do you want, when do you expect to fight next? I don't know. May. This is a, they'll suspend you because of the stitches, that, that yeah, I, I don't 60 know. day thing. Yeah. Know? Yeah, I don't know. I won't get back at it, though. Keep it. You but, are? Uh, heck yeah! Oh yeah, yeah, no. Heck no. yeah! It was tough. Twenty four, fuck it. Yeah. All you need. I do. Steak. I get so better so quick. Yeah. All, all you need you is a steak I mean? and a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, Boom. and the stitches heal. Yeah. You're ready to go, G yeah. Money. It's all over. Yes, sir. Six days yeah. a week, Jack. It's true. When you're twenty four, what do you need? A roast beef sandwich, a little peroxide. You drink some peroxide. You're back. <laughs> fuck yeah! Hell yeah! That's a, you're in a good position at a good time. Everything will peak perfectly, and you'll be right there in the fucking claim jersey and shit yes, over sir. there. Yes, sir. With the Miller brothers yep. fucking it up. Mm-hmm. That's, Lee, how we doing over there, all right? You're turning redder by the minute. Can, do you know how to sing changes? You look like you know how to sing. You look like you'd be good at karaoke. Okay, yes. Yes, you, Mickey. Oh, thank you. I don't know how to... What's changes? <laughs> changes is yeah. a song that Ozzy Osbourne <laughs> sang while he was a black Sabbath in 1980. In 19, like, the, the third album, how the fuck knows? And it's called, it's called I'm Going Through Changes. It's called Changes, but the main lyrics is, is going through changes. One night I'm sitting here, he's eating edibles like he's 10 <laughs> over there. And I'm talking to the guest like yourself, and I'm looking at his face, and I could see him, <laughs> like, thinking of his life. Like, you know, I look in your face, you get like, a, oh, yeah, I was 10. Like, he had that, but he really couldn't talk, or he had the microphone off. And all of a sudden, I looked at him, I go, Lee. And all of a sudden, he came out of it. What? And I go, you're going through changes, aren't you? I was like, yeah, right. So he's over there going through changes right now. I just saw him a few minutes ago. Those last two stars. I'm trying to find. All right, so now you go you go right back in it. You go back to five a day, six a days. Yeah, I do. Driving, uh, training, the whole thing. Yeah, I do. Um, I'll do double sessions five days a week. I used to do six. I used to do I used to do like six and then just one day off, but I like two days off. So I'll do Monday to Friday, double sessions. Practice in the morning, 
Go eat some food, practice at night. In your position, you want to fight twice a year? Maybe a little more. This time I fought three. Okay, um, this last time. Yeah, okay. I fought. I, I, I probably could have done four. Because it made me, they gave me a big break uh, between, I fought in, uh, I fought February 6th, and then I didn't fight till September. I, wa- I wanted to fight that summer, but it made me wait for punk. You know that's what I'm saying? Big, that's a big break. Yeah, I would have liked to. So I, I, I think I could do three, four a year. You can move up quickly. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you can move up quickly, especially the way you're training and whatnot. No, you look great. To you. I mean, Thanks, like man. I said, I knew you were fighting, but I didn't see the countdown to the following morning. And I'm like, this fucking kid is uh, the real fucking deal. Thanks, man. You went in there. And, were you an underdog or you were a favorite? I think it was, it was pretty even. Was I, it really even? Yeah, I think uh, at by the time we fought, I think I was like a minus 140 and he was like a plus 120. Plus 100, something like even, you know? Yeah. yeah. You're a negative 120. Okay. Yeah. So not much. Pretty, 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 pretty pick them. Pick them fight. Unbelievable how you fucking finish them. Yeah, do that big. I, I could do that, and I could do that to anyone in the world. Drop them with a big shot, choke them out. Once you hit them with that big shot, what is it? What is it about the shot that you know that you have six seconds to put the cobra hooks of death <laughs> into them? Oh, well, right as I hit him, 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 he went right down his butt, sat him right down, and then he like took he like I could tell he was like on Queer Street because he took that little dive at me. So I threw like an uppercut. He started to protect his neck, spun to the back, and he that whole time he he wasn't firing, he wasn't moving right. He was he was fucked up from the shot. Yeah, you that's that's the that, you just fucking spawned on him like a yeah. like a fucking just, 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 yeah lights out, out in Georgia, and I was like, oh my god, this is pretty goddamn amazing. I can't even think of making a move like that. What's up, Lee? It was a good fight, and I, I, I just, I don't remember the his the, the guy's name, but the Cub Swanson fight. His opponent called him out, and he Cub Swanson ended up winning. Have you ever thought like, is it a lot of pressure to win when you call someone out, or is it not really? Yeah, but it's just pressure anyway. You know what I mean? Like anyway, like when you're in the back, you're nervous as heck. Whether it's, you know, you called him out and talked talked a bunch of shit, or you know what I mean. You don't want to get beat up. In front of all your people, anyway. Right. Well, yeah. Well, you, I mean, you never want to lose. Nah, heck no, no, no. Listen, if you look at the UFC's history, the last three years and the growth, you got to talk a little bit. Yeah. You got you to be like bit. not just an athlete, but an entertainer. Yeah, you got to talk a little bit. I mean, you can't fucking dye your hair and light your feet on fire and go in there because now yeah. you're putting more attention to the entertainment than you are the fight. But this uh, a light walk there's uh it's it's funny in the old days whenever i saw a fighter going with dyed hair i would go fuck i should have been on the other guy and sure mm-hmm. enough the guy with the dyed hair would lose because they focused on the red you're hair. thinking about your hair what the fuck guy you're supposed to be thinking about the goddamn fight little things like that and maybe i was wrong a few times but for the most part any guy that walked in there with pink hair or a show, three guys bowing in front of him, over and quick too, quick like, and you're like, holy shit, he focused more on the entrance than the whole fight. You know? I used to think that in a, uh, I wrestled my senior year, and when it, people would see the guy, the wrestlers with the tattoos, they'd be like, oh, I bet he's good. But then that means he was sitting in a tattoo chair when I was out here lifting or throwing someone around. You know what I mean? It's really fucked up the influence. Of the tattoo the last 20 years. Yeah. Like, up to the time I went out of prison, the only way you had a tattoo was if you were in prison or you were a a fucking, uh, uh, they captured you in Cuba or the Chinese dudes or the Japanese Yakuza and shit. And all of a sudden it just went AWOL. Everybody got tattoos. They're everywhere. It is, you could not predict this 30 years ago. People are going to be having tattoos. People go, get the fuck out of here. Because there was such a, not a taboo against it, but yes. Oh, you're yeah. right. No, you're like a stigma. You there was a stigma it. about it. You you met my mom, Joey. My yeah. mom hates tattoos. Listen to me. She I, hates I, them. I went with a friend of mine. We talked. We got all coked up the night before. We were 16. 
and I was going to put cocoa on my knuckles, like Ozzy Osbourne put Ozzy, and we walked all the way up there, and something was like, someday I'm going to want to get a fucking job, man. And that's not, they're going to look at my hands, and I go, you know what? I already got enough fucking shit against me <laughs> at this age. The last thing I need is to put my fucking knuckle up my hands, and you know what? I would have fainted anyway. I can't see needles. So in a way, I'm kind of happy that. I got a buddy like that. What's that? The can't Pass, see needles? passes out. Yeah, I can never be. I don't care how good of a fighter I was. I could never, ever be in the UFC, play any professional sports, anything. Because I, I don't know how I'm going to react at certain situations. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to react at certain situations. I might see you get your head punched off, and I might just walk away. <laughs> I might see you get hit and your coach wipe your eye and then throw the towel down in a live thing and I'll look at the amount of blood on the towel and I'll have a nervous breakdown. Do you follow me? So I don't like that shit no more. Mm -hmm. I fucked it. I fainted at one live UFC and I fainted one time at home watching a live U a UFC event. The fight I fainted at it was one of those La Palm, Palm fights. The Palms. The Palm, and I was there with Ralphie May. All right, Ralphie May was performing in Vegas. I asked Joe for a ticket. He's sitting there. It's me, Ralphie, some chick with big fake tits, <laughs> next to a doctor, thank God. Same thing happened. It was a fight. They fought. The one guy opened the other guy up. I watched the whole thing go down. I heard the skin break. <laughs> Damn, and the guy goes, ugh, ugh. I heard the whole fucking thing go down. You know, I heard them, the announcers, kind of saying, he's cut, he's cut, whatever the fuck. And all of a sudden, I saw him get up, and I saw the coach. When As soon as he got up, the doctor comes over to you and puts his stitch, whoever, puts the thing over the eye. And when he got to the corner, he sat down. He threw that down. And my mind went down with the towel, and I saw that there was no towel. It was just mm -hmm. all blood. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're waking me up. They're giving me <laughs> water and shit. What about when they have, like, when they're covering up the cut, and then they open it up, and then it, like, squirts a little bit? Have you seen that happen? From time to time, but I don't really focus on it. Once I see a towel all of a sudden, <laughs> I go for a fucking soda or fucking water or something. You understand me? I don't sit there and wait and watch the blood squirt out of his fucking head. And I see it. Sometimes they get punched, and you see the blood... I don't bother to watch the replay. I saw it already. I saw it squirt out. You see a mouthpiece fly out, things like that. I don't want to see the fucking guy squirt. Sometimes I, I, I watch it, and guess what? He's bleeding to death, and nothing happens. So that's why I don't like watching that shit, because I don't know how I'm going to react. What do you think about that, then? What do you think there, Lisa? You don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about, for Christ's sake. What are you going to do after you leave here? You're going to go home and get some Reese? I want to give a happy holiday shout-out to all the motherfucking people who listen to this podcast. Like I said, I know this is a heavy time of the year. You know what? I love you and everything like that, but snap out of it, cocksuckers. 2017's coming. It's over! I want to give a big shout-out to my man, Matt Homer. Holmeyer and Lorne Rosenker and Darcy J. Watt and Oss Warrior and Ali Baz and Carl Carmen Colosimo and Johnny Utah and Tal Yaffe Brookie and fucking Uki Spooky Dominuki and, uh, you know, all the motherfuckers, my people in Austin. You know, I love you cocksuckers with all my heart, man. Thank you for listening every week and shit like that. And that's it, man. What is your next plan of attack? Do you need me? You just want to keep fighting. I don't want to fucking keep fighting. Hear no films, no nothing. You ain't got time nah, for nah. that shit. Keep fighting. That's what I like to do. And just tell the motherfuckers, you know what? I'll tell you what I will do. Say, listen. Give me 20 mil to hold me. I'm 24. When I'm 28, I'll be worth double that. And I'll give you three films. But they all got to be Charles Bronson remakes. I'm going to choose them. Boom, bitches. And I choose them. Boom. And we got to remake them. Uncle Joey picks them. Like Charles Bronson would do it to his extent at that next level. How would he do 
death wish now with what's going on in New York. You know what I'm saying? Will he just buy sticks of dynamite and throw them at motherfuckers? Like, surprise, and just blow motherfuckers up. If we're going to start remaking something, let's remake it even better. You know? But let's keep it how these motherfuckers would do it. They're going to remake everything. They're going to remake the Honeymooners. You do know that, right? They rebooted the Honeymooners on CBS. To a guy like me, that would be a complete slap in the face, man. Unless I play fucking Ralph Cram. <laughs> <laughs> if I play Ralph Cram, then we can get this party started the right way. But he always says he's going to send it to the moon. He can't say those things today. He can't say a lot of things yeah. that he would say today. That's true, yeah. He can't say no bang zoom, one day Alice, he can't threaten her. All those, he can't call Norton stupid. None of that stuff. There was never any, but there was, see, there was brilliant episodes of the Honeymooners. See, the Honeymooners, at the end of, at the end of Saturday Night Live, it's a great show and all, but count how many fucking writers they have. When you watch the Honeymooners, it's two writers and Jackie Gleason. You grew up on the Honeymooners? You? I've seen it. What but no, I didn't grow up on it. You grew up on it? See, what kind of generation? This is what I'm fucking talking about. And they're on WPIX. Yeah. Constantly and shit. Listen, before you get into any other comic, watch, like Christmas Day, watch Jackie Gleason. All right. God damn, that's a good episode. Yeah, Look, they got my they got uh, grandma got the tapes. It's we a marathon. The, yeah. It's a marathon in Jersey all day on Wednesday, on Saturday. That's what you do Christmas Day. Boom. You to go for a walk, you get tuned up. You come back, you spray binaca, a fucking mouthwash and shit. You put Visine in your eyeballs. Where did you go? I was worried about you. I had to go for a walk. There was burglars in the neighborhood. <laughs> a couple of Cubans and Puerto Ricans and shit. They were driving. They were playing that La Bamba music. And all of a sudden, they're like, let me cook for you. And you sit down, and there's the honeymooners. You take your shoes off. They make you hot cocoa, and you don't go nowhere. If you're really fucking lucky on Christmas Day, you got March of the Wooden Soldiers. With fucking, which they play, but see, people wouldn't watch that shit today. You guys wouldn't even think of watching that shit today. That's history right there. What who gives a Frenchman's fuck, Lee? What do you got planned for Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve, well, that's the big one for Paula's mom. So what's she doing? What's she making? Uh, she cooking she, the goat this year? No, she I think gonna it, kill it. Isn't Christmas tamales? I don't know what it is. I don't I'm know pretty sure it's tamales. Times. So, so Christmas she, Eve, you going over there? Oh yeah. And where are you going Christmas Day? Uh, no plans as right now. Look at you. You said tamales on Christmas? On Christmas Eve, yeah. You grow Mexican? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm into... Uh, people are going to get mad. I like tamales. My favorite are the sweet ones, though. I'm not like... The the, the, the masa thing is real heavy for me. Uh, uh, I like it, though. Uh, uh, How uh, you, you try to eat uh, 18 yeah. plates of tamales, Who dude? eats 18 fucking plates tamales of tamales? Tamales doesn't stop. You, look at, doesn't you stop. look at two tamales... You go, let me get red one pork, and let me get a green one, a little spicy. You pull them in. You put a little sauce on that motherfucker, a little bit of cheese to dilute the fucking spiciness, and you eat them like a soldier, and you say they were very good, and you walk away. Yeah, you do that, but then her mom serves them with rice, and then her mom comes by and gives you more. What type of rice? Yellow wreck Mexican rice? Of course. So you eat it, Lee. What the fuck? I, I do. You go back home. You do some kettlebells on the balcony, and you balance it out. You know what I'm saying? Why are you playing games with me for? You know how it's done. It's you that you go bananas. I know. And I would go bananas too, but you can't. You got to control yourself. You're a savage. You're a, you're a student of the game. Cocksucker, you're eating Blue Apron. I know. I am. How are you going to be eating Blue Apron and then go over there and eat 18 tamales? I can't eat 18 tamales. There's That's my point. What type of loyalty are we talking about? My, my buddy Larry got me a hotel where they have cheeseburgers for two ninety nine. I might just I really, move there. I know, and I know he already yelped it and everything. <laughs> Are the cheeseburgers made of goat or fucking Armenian meat that was killed in Glendale and <laughs> fucking mafia meat dipped in whatever? What do you go as my main little brother? Champ. Be champ. Keep winning. Make some money. One step at a time, my friend. You yeah. got all the fucking utensils. You got sidekicks for Jesus. Yes, sir. Uncle Joey will be talking about you. Thank you. When I go to Jersey, I'll be dropping your name. What, bitch? Let him know. So you're moving to lightweight? Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm dropping down a little bit. Two Jersey guys in the lightweight division. So what are you weighing now? Like, uh, so I can make 170 pretty easy, but when okay. I'm walking around, I'm at like 190. Oh. But if I if I diet and like stay on my like fight camp diet just a little longer, just do the what drop the water. I'd you be a champ. Go, you want to go down to 155? Yeah, think about it. No shit. Think about it. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Jim Fuck Jim Miller told told me I should. Uh, my buddy Billy D told me I should. I and I, I think I, I could you know I, I'll I'll eventually be able to be the champ at 72, 70 as well. But I think I could be a champ at fifty five in like a couple years, year or two. Cause I'll be huge. So for, that. for you to fight at one fifty five, to be on, it's not fucking. You need to walk around at one seventy. I know. That's yeah. the fight that's week. The I'm good thing. That's like I, easier I, said than done when you live in New Jersey, though. Yeah, that's right. I gotta be like disciplined. Like I gotta have a crappy month. I'm not gonna enjoy food. But then after, like now, like I'm in that spot where I could eat. You know. What do you weigh now? Right now, I'm probably I'm probably about like ninety right now. So once you go into camp, what do you eat? What kind of? Breakfast I just do you I switch, switch it up. I go clean, clean. I I only do like carbs. Like I do rice only like before and after workouts. Like if I like and if I go to fifty five, I'll have to I'll do that and I'll just portion. I'm just like I'm a gavone. Like I'll, I'll crush. I'll eat a lot when I eat. You know. So I just gotta but like I'll overdo it. If I control like my portions and whatnot, I I, I could be all right. You no, know, it's so weird. Like when you're in high school, when you get out those college years, you're still working out with that high school intensity. You could fucking eat, dog. Mm-hmm. You could eat. You know, I used to eat a box of cereal like nothing. Just crush it. Like nothing. Yeah. Box of cereal, two eggs, oh. bread, bacon, and walk around like nothing. No farting, <laughs> no shitting yeah. afterward. Like I could still put away another eight ounces or whatever you yeah. got. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I kept it low just in case I bump into something. Just in <laughs> case I go to the Mickey's house and then mom's got a cheese omelet with potatoes yep. or something. And she invites me in. I can't deny it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How am I going to disrespect her and shit like that? Dog, I wish you all the fucking luck in the world. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. You know, it's cool to be on here talking to you, man. Big yeah, fan. It was cool to have yeah. you on and stuff. Garnett. I want to thank Garnett. Garnett, for yeah, yeah, together. He's a good fucking man. Yeah. Let me just do two things here, and you get out of here. Go eat. Go jump up and down. Do what you do. Let's be honest. Most of your problems start with the mind, all right? Fear, anger, stress, anxiety, depression, and sleeplessness. They begin in your head. But they can wreck your life. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can make a major difference in 10 minutes a day. Headspace is made, meditation made simple. It's guided meditations you listen to whenever you want, wherever you want, right on your phone, computer, or tablet. It's rooted in thousands of years of tradition with thousands of specific studies that show its positive effects like improving focus, relationship, and harmony. Join over 4 million users already getting Headspace for free right now. Download the free Headspace app and begin the Take 10 program for 10 days of guided meditation at headspace.com slash Joey. Again, the Headspace Takes 10 program is a 100% free way to experience the benefits of meditation in your busy modern life. Train your mind for a healthier, less stressed life. Start your free trial today at headspace.com slash joey. That's headspace.com slash joey. I want to give a shout out to these fucking savages because I love them with all my heart. Again, the bidet is back, bitches. I don't know if you people know it. You're ready to get the dream gift. A bidet is back. Do you even know what a bidet does? No, you don't. You strap it onto your toilet. It's portable. You don't even need a plumber. You do nothing. You strap it on. You tap some fucking screws. And next thing you know, next time you walk 10 miles, next time you take a big dump. You know, sometimes you take a dump, and even if you wipe your muffler, you leave that room, and you're like, you know what? Something ain't right. Even though I took a shower 20 minutes ago, you ever take a nice shower? You put your clothes on, all of a sudden you got to take a shit, and you're like, what did I take a shower for? God, I might as well would... start your day over. Yeah, I would... now, I got... now, now you walk around, and you're self-conscious, you got rotten ass, no more. And now you can hit it again in 20 minutes, because sometimes you wipe your ass, but mysteriously you go for a walk or something, or a long jog, 
and also you get rotten ass all over again. Those days are done. Before you even leave the house, you hit that little fucking muffler with some water, and bam! No fucking germs, no swamp ass, no nothing. Tell them, Lee. Break it down for them. Clean as a whistle. I like it. I I start my day with it. I I shower after I work out, but, dude, when I I wake up in the middle of the night, sometimes I turn the heat on because in the morning it gets fucking cold. So, but then I get all cuddly in the bed and I get sweaty and that's not nice. So before I go to the gym, I always use, it's great. I start every day with it. And you know what? It's fresh water and it cleans your muffler. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you're sitting there overnight, you get that rotten, and you go to Starbucks and you try to order coffee and there's a girl, funny, attractive woman and she's with some fucking uh, Johnny Harvey. And he, you know, he gave her a stab in the night before. But she spent the night, but she didn't take a shower. How do you know? Because she's got that rat nest behind her head. And you're sitting there going, this chick didn't even wash that monkey this morning. No more. You can go, listen, honey, I gave you a stabbing last night. Wash that fucking rotten condom smell <laughs> out of your muffler with my fucking... <laughs> Hit that bidet, baby. You don't got to walk around with that dead fucking condom skunk in your little monkey. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> What I'm trying to say is go to hellotushy.com right now slash church, bitch. Get 10% off your order. You need this for the stucking stuffers, the stucking (laughs) stuffers, whatever. The stuffing stuffers. Whatever you stuff. Whatever the fuck you stuff, you can get (laughs) hellotushy.com slash church. Oh, shit, bitches. Oh, my God. It's a beautiful night to be alive. Listen. This is the gift you've been looking for. Everybody wants to know, you know what? I worked hard all year. What do I want to get myself? I need another TV for the bedroom. That's going to disrupt my sleep. I need a new car. Like, I need to commit suicide. You know what? (laughs) (laughs) Really, I'm going to buy a new car to pay $1,800 a year insurance and to get tickets out of buck 20 your fucking bank. Fuck you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get myself a bidet. I'm going to fucking take a shit from now on and just sit there with hot water, sprinkling my ass on. I'm going to turn the lights off. I'm going to put my feet up. I'm going to see if I can order some Chinese woman for 22 an hour that I can pedicure my feet with hot water hitting my asshole. That's a fucking goal you want to achieve in 2017, and I'm giving it to you tonight. HelloTushy.com slash church. Bam! 10% off. One more time, Headspace. And my main motherfuckers over at On It, throwing heat. Go over there for the supplements. I'm telling you, you're getting into jujitsu. Get that shroom tech sport, and fucking take two of those. Take them before my fights. Yeah, take them all the time. Love I'm telling on you. It. You're jumping up and down. Everything's beautiful. All right. Go to On It and slash in church. Boom, and get ten percent off delivered to your house. Who's better than your uncle Joe? Fuck suckers. Nobody. I just got your shroom tech, and I'm like your asshole washed like that. <laughs> Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. I don't even know what the fuck I'm trying to put together. <laughs> Yo, Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart to all of you motherfuckers. The Lingus is the. It's, it's just too much. Bob Lingus, what are you laughing about? I love it. The Chicago Mafia, 10th Planet, fucking uh, Dead Squad, fucking uh, my man, Mickey Gall's family and his sisters. You guys, you bad motherfuckers. Thank you for coming on, for you listening. For you listening to the stories, for you listening to our racist and disgusting remarks and not reporting this to the IRS for many reasons. You understand me? We love you, man. And I, I can cut this out if I'm not supposed to say it. Is, is your Ari show coming up soon? And this is the last Tomorrow show? Tomorrow night. That's right. Look at Lee Syatt. Boom. Look look at Lee Syatt, the assistant to the assistant to the assistant to the assistant to the assistant show director. There he is. <laughs> so again, okay, can, for that, uh, and the last show, and, and one of the last shows of the year, maybe. Turn on your VCRs my, right now coming? when you download this. It's Wednesday. Do me a favor. I'm on. This is not happening. But go ahead, Ari. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you, my brother. No, I was just saying, can I get one of the assistants cut off for that assist? Okay, you're the assistant to the assistant to the assistant to the assistant. How's that? Make a new business card. Today. Bam. See, you got that last. <laughs> Just put Scott's case. <laughs> and I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you. You made a fan and a believer out of me, and uh, you did it in a weird way. Because I watched that footage, and next thing you know, you were fighting him. And I didn't understand if you had fought, and I missed it. 
I'm like, well, how the fuck did the, where the fuck have I been? Do I smoke that much marijuana? And then after what I realized, and you were fighting again, I'm like, look at him. This motherfucker was going for people's heads. Going for it, yeah. Oh, shit. Little I'm by little. Like a Jersey motherfucker yes, like sir. Sinatra. Fresh in Hoboken out of 19th Street. He said, fuck it. I ain't letting these people hold me down, uh -huh. Jay. What the fuck am I talking about? I'm not doing edibles no more. <laughs> Before this show, you understand me? Merry Christmas. And we'll be back next week. We are doing a podcast next oh, okay. week. It's a surprise fucking podcast for you motherfuckers. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great time for your families. Thank you for supporting us. Play something, Lee. Make something up. Okay. It took you too long. You slip and say. Well. Uh, 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 what happened? I'll put the music up. No. There you go.